Hello and welcome to a very special evening on a new and exciting plane, at least for um, D&D a little bit. Welcome to Streets of New Capenna. I will be your dungeon master, Michelle Rapp. And if you are joining us for the first time this e of joining us on this wonderful marathon stream this evening, uh, welcome. Welcome to our space. And we hope that you have a wonderful time watching us do crimes. Uh, for the next three hours so that's going to be a fun a fun jaunt um so i'm again i'm michelle rap if you are interested in any if you want to check out anything that i'm doing um you can find me on twitter at kilmfeen potter um as well as instagram at kilmfeen pottery but let, that's enough of me you're going to get a whole bunch of that in the next couple of hours so why don't we toss it over to our wonderful cast here starting with the ever wonderful lexi caught you Caught you right at there. Perfect time. Oh, I'm uh, so good at that. I'm so good at that. I love it. I love it. Yeah, my name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. Uh, you can actually find me on Twitter under that same name. Uh, same name. Um, I'm a dungeon master, but tonight I'm here playing this game on this amazing channel that I've been a fan of for forever. So yeah, uh, same show. Yeah, I've been on the Kofi since like like it's been like maybe a year and a half now. So I am so happy to be doing this with y'all. And who are you playing tonight? Tonight, I'm going to be playing Jimena Mazzara. She is a tabaxi snow leopard bodyguard of sorts. Uh, specifically, should I say what 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 family I'm? Oh, you don't have to yet. You can get you can get I'll away or as, as much or as little. Okay, that's fine. You can be coy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, next, let's go to Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Uh, hello, my name is Daniel Kwan. I'm the co-host of the Asians Represent podcast. I'm a game designer, a cultural consultant, writer, but wear many hats in this industry. Uh, I'm going to be playing Marlo, a tabaxi artificer who's really, I realized that I just wanted to play like Fast and Furious in D&D. So I straight up just made Vin Diesel uh, in D&D. Um, except I made a feline Vin Diesel who's actually really like physically weak. Um, I made nerdy Vin Diesel. How about that? Um, I mean, Nerdy Vin Diesel, um, Marlo lives his life a quarter mile of the time, um, but really is, uh, can I, can I talk? <laughs> uh, I thought, I thought I could hold it together for that. I really That's thought cool. I could. Um, but, uh, can I talk about like character stuff? I, I know Lex, you're they're, like holding it close, but like. You can know. keep you. You can put your cards on the table. You can keep them close to your chest. You can up the ante. Okay. I'm like super excited about my character. Um, Marlo is, I, I, I don't want to say works for the Obscura, but is like indebted to the Obscura. Marlo is predictably all about family. Family is like the most important thing. Um, and Marlo's only family member is his sister, Roxy, who got into an accident, maybe doing something illegal, as many people do. I would, bet, I, would I would assume, Chris, you're the expert. Um, <laughs> but, um, Roxy's condition is uh, is not good, and the obscura have been dangling. Oh, it was I, unintentional sort of catnip cat toy sort of. <laughs> Dang it! Um, I've been dangling sort of a solution over Marlo's head, and Marlo has to do work for them. So Marlo is a driver. Uh, I built my character with the spe with very specific specifically around like casting spells out of a car. <laughs> So when I'm outside of the car, we'll see if I can do things. I have plans for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. But I also have plans for you with the car. Oh, for sure. One of the reasons why I was so gung-ho about New Capenna as setting is because we have cars and they're beautiful. So very excited to have you um, also lead into that and also express our mutual admiration of the Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> Speaking of families, we've got... Another good person here to, uh, who can introduce themselves. Michael, how's it going tonight? Hello, my name is Michael wow. Sinclair II. Uh, I'm doing great. Um, I go by Michael Critz everywhere. I'm a TTRPG performer, uh, Magic the Gathering semi-pro and voiceover actor things. Uh, so today I'm playing Little Rice. He is a rogues monk um, and he's under the brain. My brain is so fried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've not been on a lot of sleep. Um, 
why can't I think of my family's name? It's the John Colors. <laughs> <laughs> You're, You're forgetting John. You're forgetting John. How yeah, dare you? Get off! No, How I'm dare. no longer Get a John girl. Table. I'm gonna kick that out of the John girl club. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> You're the tears. You're the tears. That's Riveteers. right. Sweet. Absolutely. Yes, I'm the river tears. Um, and you know, uh, little rice it doesn't. Little rice is about the river tears. It, he. It helped his auntie, which then helped his family, and he thinks of the Riveteers like gang, as like a a a family of sorts. Like it's just like, hey, what up, my brother? What up, my sister? My cousin? Like, you know, it's very much that of like everyone feels not like family, like mafia family, but everyone feels family like from the dirt, from you know, from the trench. Family. Mm -hmm. When you're yeah. there, you're family so yeah we we all have garden uh that's our, that's our <laughs> we, we all have garden we yeah. oh my god <laughs> new capenna home of the most violent olive garden <laughs> it's true no, no, yeah. it's probably the best olive garden marinara though. or blood uh yeah that, who knows um but the breadsticks are still free and still um, banging <laughs> oh yeah um so yeah, that's that's me. That's uh that's uh little rice. Uh he's a big rocks, you know, and uh I think you folks will love his voice. I'm, I I think I found it this morning in the car, so hopefully that comes out. Amazing. And last but not least, the ever illustrious Chris Mooney. Chris. Hi. What's going on? Introduce yourself. Uh, yes, I am Chris Mooney. I uh, use they them pronouns. I am a uh card designer at Wizards of the Coast. Um in particular of relevance tonight, uh I was the leader of the Streets of New Capenna Commander decks. Um so for anyone who enjoyed those uh you know I hope you had a good time. Um yeah. the uh oh, yeah. so Oh yeah. <laughs> My Lord Xander deck <laughs> pops up. It's so good. It's so good. Um so the uh I because of that I have a uh, you know deeper knowledge of this plane. I uh, spent a lot of time working on it. Um but tonight I am here just as a fan, a lover of D&D &D and magic here to have a good time uh and uh not uh provide some light background info in case uh we need to get into any details okay chris confirmed that there's an olive garden at new capenna the people need to know it's canon now yeah i, I want to be clear that <laughs> if there was an olive garden on new capenna the cabaretti for sure would run it oh, like, oh yeah the, 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 we, we just heard that from a wizards of the coast word. employee right now we just oh, it's now canon it's confirmed everything yeah, happening yeah. Tonight i'm canon. expecting a new card soon <laughs> olive garden <laughs> Olive Garden taps for white, green, and red. Yes. <laughs> the yes. Cabaretti Club. The Cabaretti Club is just an Olive Garden. It makes yeah, sauce Yeah, the Rose tokens. Room is actually sauce an Olive tokens. Garden. Sauce tokens. Those are the new food tokens. Sauce tokens. I did. I, think, uh, I feel like sauce tokens need to have, like, multi-purpose, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For I sure. did in the Cabaretti deck uh, make sure that we put a food, a card that made food tokens in. Oh. Um, <laughs> because there, there are some, like, one of the nice things about the commander deck, I don't want to get too deep into the magic stuff, but uh, one of the nice things about the commander decks is you get to use a bunch of old mechanics that, you know, in our main sets, we don't like putting in too many different mechanics, but in the commander decks, we kind of have a little bit more leeway. So we went, we really went back and we found all the things we were like, oh, the cab ready, you have to have a food card because like, that's like, they throw big parties, they run all like the clubs and the restaurants. So um, yeah, anyway, definitely the, that's where the cab ready would be at. And Chris, who are you playing tonight? Tonight I am playing uh, Ludwig Trevon, who is known in the business as the Squid, um, but to to close friends um, or to people who know him well, uh, it's he's Squiddy. Uh, uh, I'm a cephalid, uh, a cephalid warlock and rogue. Um, and uh, Squiddy's been in the business. He's been in the business a long time. Uh, he's a little bit past his prime, you know. The uh, he's he's getting up there in years. But he's been around a long time. He's seen absolutely everything there is to see. Uh, and he, he knows how to get the job done. And he's with the brokers. So we've got That's some right. yes. old, yeah, we've got yeah, some Squiddy, old lawyer blood here. Yep, mm. Squiddy is, Squiddy's been with the brokers for a long time. And so he's really ingrained himself in the upper crust of the criminal uh, underworld of New Capenna. So he knows all the big bosses. Uh, he's probably gotten them off, you know, uh, for, for tax evasion. Um, uh, he's not, he's not like a, you know, top level guy, um, but he's like a lieutenant that sort of is well respected and trusted. 
Amazing. And so with all of our players taking their positions on the big chessboard that is New Capenna, let's begin our story. So the, um, the scene opens with the sound of jazz. As we hurtle through the blind eternities, the gray fog to some, um, shadows, indeterminable, inscrutable. But we follow that clarinet, that wailing voice, that really fantastic rhythm to New Capenna, or rather Capenna, as it were, a plane that was once at war with an unknown but completely uncompromising enemy who uh, were the <laughs> Phyrexians. Um, but in the time <laughs> since, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm no, being I coy. We need to do a lore <laughs> deep dive right now so everybody right now. understands. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So um, the uh, this particular world was invaded by a series of Geiger-esque um, mechanical and flesh monsters that came in from somewhere beyond the plains, their own world. Um, and after a decades, maybe hundred uh, centuries old struggle between the inhabitants of New Capenna, which in the past had primed themselves as a, a basically sort of an old school European kind of feudal system. You had your knights, you had your nobles, you had your um, artisans and merchants, you had your druids all banding together in order to repel the enemy. And amongst their number were actually the angels themselves. Yes, there are angels in Yucapenna, and at that time they were among them, um, among those fighting. And so they broke a deal. Uh, they brokered a deal with the uh, most powerful demons on this plane in order to establish a sanctuary for those who actually could have survived this Phyrexian invasion. They fought tooth and nail with every inch of their energy to create this haven, um, this tall towering metropolis uh, that they could actually defend against these invaders. And so when that happened, they were able to finally um, keep the population, what was left of Capenna, safe. But with this uh, came the establishment of New Capenna, a bustling city, huge in stature, uh, with designated parts that managed to reach up to the sky. That being said, though, the archdemons looking ahead realized, oh, we're not going to be able to really be able uh, to defend ourselves against the Phyrexians unless we can figure out a way to get the angels kind of everywhere. Not just positions as living beings from gate to gate, from elevator entrance to elevator entrance, but perhaps as a larger network. And what's the best way of doing that? Let's... um. Let's distill that, literally. So using um, a couple of other resources, namely their, um, their, the warlocks that they then managed to create compacts with and eventually form the five families, uh, they were able to capture the angels. And over time, they were able to actually even distill their essence into a liquid form, now called Halo. The general population has no idea this happened. They think the angels have just sort of left for now. Maybe they'll come back one day, but they left this gift for you to use to see how, you know, they will, to see how you'll be able to cope in the time that they're away. The substance halo is quite spectacular. It not only is able to enhance your magical abilities, your physical abilities, but is incredibly curative as well. And for so many years, generations, um, the denizens of, of New Capenna have been able to hold on to it, exchange it, use it as currency as some sort, but now it's starting to run a little dry. And the five families, the Riveteers, aka the builders of this world led by the Zayatora, the um, Cabaretti, the party people, as we like to say, we were talking about them earlier, the owners of the now completely canon Olive Garden <laughs> up in Park Heights. <laughs> um, the maestros, old um, venerated nobles and vampires who are art critics and um, are a bit deadly with their criticism. Um, the Obscura, 
a rather a, a rather i suppose um they're basically a spy network they're able to know all and see all led by um a rather amazing uh, sphinx riff uh Rafine. and last but not least um Oh gosh, why can't I think of all five at the same time? The brokers. The Come brokers. On, the brokers. lawyers. Because you can't have a good, you can't have a good uh metro For like once. Nineteen twenty. Your Olive Gardens, your Denny's, your Your Denny's. You where you get what else are you gonna get your Saul Goodman's here, huh? <laughs> so with that, the brokers, aka uh the people who will be able to represent you for a price. They won't ask up front, but they'll certainly be able to help you later on. These five families are who rule New Capenna. Um, and they often have deep and wide connections. There is no real um, governing body. It's really just these five. And anyone who does work, I guess, for the state, quote unquote, um, acts more as like a Disney Park cast member, really, than anyone of real authority or power. Um, so if you're getting mugged, don't expect someone who's trying to pick the trash to help you. <laughs> so with that being said, this is an incredibly dangerous, incredibly stylish 1920s inspired world. Um, and it is in this world that we see a car, a beautiful, dark, glossy black car, large, able to fit say four to five people <laughs> convenient yeah. zipping down the back roads um on near empty streets somewhere in the mezio the middle and largest part of new capenna this is the area where opportunists come to rise above to the to park heights or people who are descending from park heights are taking a bit of a rest before either slipping further down into um the oh my gosh why can't <laughs> before slipping further down um or being able to rise back up and so the call die the call die thank you very much there's a lot of terminology <laughs> <laughs> the caldaya um or the river tears dwell mostly um but you're on your way to pick up a couple of people and as we as the camera kind of zooms inside this beautiful uh car almost like a Rolls Royce, but has smoother, sleeker, curvier parts on the exterior. Um, we see on the hardwood dash, a golden counter right underneath the clock that says 50 miles. And the music we've been hearing this whole time has been coming from its exquisite surround sound speakers driving this car. Mm -hmm is one tabaxi marlo what's on your mind name is louise louise yes because i want to bring louise belcher energy oh, yes to this world <laughs> please um, so this car's name is louise um yeah i want i want the car to kind of like enter the scene like han in tokyo drift drifting around the corner um in that red sort of like the orange sports car um yeah, I think Marlo's going to be sitting there, like you know, or, or, I am in motion. I am heading to my destination, or have I pulled up to my destination? You are heading to your destination. You are on the back roads. Your car is silent as it pulls around. Um, Halo. It's a combination of Halo and normal fuel. Um, the, the special engine that the Obscura have installed basically make it so that you can literally sneak up on someone in this giant hybrid. vehicle. Yeah, it's a hybrid. Mm. Prius. <laughs> you are in the swankiest dang Prius on this plane. <laughs> Don't make it's silent scanning. if I'm. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's where I yeah. draw the line. <laughs> My surround sound. I've got these like um, brass sort of like speakers all around the car. They're all very visible. It's almost like the uh, like the cash cab. It's like there's lights all over the inside. It's a very like classy vehicle. Um, but yeah, Mar Marlo's going to be driving, but kind of distracted by this counter that's on the dash it's just mm -hmm. 50 miles this, this so counter has changed before but there's something wrong and marlo kind of taps it from time to time hoping it, that it, it will change. 
yeah, you tap it and it makes like a crystalline sound as you um, try to investigate whether or not it's actually going to change at all. Sometimes this counter goes up, sometimes this counter goes down, but that counter symbolizes or literally keeps on the record the miles you've got left to the obscure before you can get that book. That book of old lore to help your sister. How long do you think you've had, Louise? Uh, Louise was, I don't want to say gifted to me, but kind of granted to me by the Obscura when I kind of incurred this debt. Marlo has a history of stealing vehicles, uh, hot wiring cars, and as an artificer, you know, kind of um, kidding them out with all sorts of neat tricks, making them do things that you wouldn't expect. Cars that mm -hmm. jump, cars that drift. Um, and other things like that. But I think Marlo's had this car for two years at this point. When it started, that was there was a much bigger number up on that dashboard. And now it's the last push, the last job. Maybe, maybe this time I'll be able to get it. And it's with that hope in mind that you turn the corner and silently pull up to an abandoned train station where a rocks stands there. Little Rice, what are you wearing? Oh, okay. Your ride's yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, I am wearing a, um, wow, what do you call it? Oh, yeah. So I have like denim overalls. And then on top, um, on my hat, like what I'm wearing on my head, on my, my nice rocks head, which are like rhinoceroses, if we didn't explain that earlier. Uh, is a, also a denim like kangaroo hat. I forget what those things are called. Oh, flat, um, a news cap? Like a news cap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like kind of tucked over like this. And you see a big, um, like a big mall right next to him. And he's kind of like tapping it. Uh, like he's, ta he's, 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 no. So he has his arm around it and he has like a foot on top of the head of the mall, which is on the ground. And he's eating like peanuts out of like that telltale stripe red and white bag. <laughs> and he's just he's he's cracking peanuts um uh and if you as you're pulling up he's like no way man this can't be the ride this this is a sweet ride um <laughs> oh my god my marlo kind of looks just kind of just like <laughs> this is not who i was expecting to pick up windows can roll down marlo couldn't hear you the entire time you say this is a sweet ride marlo looks sees you Finish eating before you get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep up the calories, man. I got you. You see my finger. That's how Rule you... of Louise: No food on, in the car. No stains right, respect... on the seat. I respect that. I respect that. Well, you, uh, you want to put that workout? Put the hammer. Can I put it in the in the in the back? Or you can, I, can the, I have the right trunk? Kind of like opens up as you were saying that. Oh, okay. Uh, Sure, also sure. silent, silent, very yes. smooth hydraulics. Uh, I try and gingerly put it in, but I'm, I'm, it, it's still gonna <laughs> rock the car. Uh, and then I'll slam the back of the the trunk too hard, too hard, like just, <laughs> just hard, not so hard that you you say something about it, but hard enough that makes you feel uncomfortable uh, to say bounce. anything. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll uh, open the door and I'll take like a couple of seconds. How you get in this car? How do you? How do you? The, it's got hey. seagull. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I was gonna it's say got seagull. Still, Doors. I'm I'm still trying Silent. to get into. Sorry. I'm huge. I, I'm still trying to get in this car, and I, it just takes me like fifteen <laughs> seconds to kind of like get my butt in, and then like watch my horn and like get inside the the ride. Oh, this is comfy. Oh, this when is you get, huge. well, yeah, when you get in the car, it's actually not laid out like a typical like. SUV or anything like that with like rows. It's mm -hmm. actually almost like a tiny little conference room in the back. Uh, I'll put one of my, is it a hoof? I don't know. I put one of my legs on like a seat while I'm sitting on one other seat. This is swanky. This is, this is nice. I like this. Buckle up. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I will try and buckle, but I have to like use I'm on the side, but I have to use the middle seat, the middle seats thing to click in, and I'll just click in. Remember, kids, wear your seatbelts. If you can wear seatbelts in New Capanna, you can wear seatbelts everywhere. And anywhere. 
and anywhere. And I mean, if they have. <laughs> there, there is safety in New Capenna in the vehicles. Yes. Chris, is this, is this true? You can confirm. <laughs> yes. You can confirm or deny. I'll, I'll confirm. <laughs> there are panning. safety standards <laughs> are on vehicles safety. in New Capenna. At least yes. that. Confirmed. Okay. Now we know later on if we crash, there are airbags too. Um, 100% like, there are airbags. <laughs> I'd like to take us to our next destination. Amazing. So yeah, you get in the car, music starts playing again as you smoothly, silently get off the back roads, get onto the main highway, and you basically start heading up. The, um, the, there are multiple ways of getting to Park Heights, the uh, highest level of New Capenna, the place that receives the most sun, the most green, the most prestige in this place. And as you eventually take the exit and emerge into this space, the grandiosity of the skyscrapers that um, you both see through the very spacious windows of Luis strike you once again. Up here, you can actually see the night sky. You can actually see stars. It's something that you never, you, it's always been a luxury to you. You've never actually known a world where the sky could be only for a select few. And then you um, turn into what looks like a really lovely residential neighborhood. Brownstones, um, rows of them with immaculately manicured little hedges in front um, meet your eyes as you pull into one innocuous looking brownstone that looks the same as all the rest. Um, and Jimena, you are standing there with your spear dressed in immaculately in your uniform, your blazer, um, your suit, as another member of the maestros looks at you, uh, a newer vampire, and says, well, I think a ride's here. I One more job, so. eh? One last job. As they always say. Doors silently open up. Oh, uh, before you leave, uh, Leia told me to give you this. And a little, um, a little wooden oval is placed into your hand. Mm. As you look at it, you see that there is a little catch. So if you wanted to open it, you could. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that she just said, yeah, she uses like a claw to pop it open. It pops open and a little tune begins to play and you recognize it as something that you both used to dance to. Mm. And little times that you can get away. She's, uh, and uh, the vampire says, I don't tell, I won't tell your, her, I won't tell her stepfather that uh, I've passed it over, but I suppose Xander probably knows anyway. He knows everything. There's nothing I can hide from him. Well, I guess I'll just stand here while you leave. It's my job. Keep doing it. You're doing yeah. a good job. I think they she's... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, they've got me for live drawing on Thursday, so I feel like this is good. This is good practice. Yeah, just stand still. Real still. And I'm just yeah. gonna uh, clasp my hand on his shoulder, uh, just making him very aware how much bigger than him I am. I'll just shake him a little bit and wow. step into the car <laughs> yeah you descend the stairs get into the car and you see a big big rocks in front of you with his leg up on the on the seat is that appropriate for uh, who are you i'm gonna take the foot i think i do that thing where i pick the foot off like your gigantic rhino yeah. foot and move it a little <laughs> to the side and i is there space in the front or are you in the front will you allow anyone to sit in the front with you 
This person seems to be a... Uh... Is a partition up? <laughs> there, There is a partition up right now. I'm looking in... For now, everyone will sit in the back. Uh, I will... Once you lift my foot up, I was like, Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I, I'll show Parmar manners. Um, let me let me dust that off for you. I'm gonna dust. And so like, I just start trying to sweep it like my foot, but I don't know if that's actually helpful or not helpful. Um, and... Uh, Leather. My name's my name's Lil Rice. What? How about you? What's what's your name? I think at the same time that Marlo says the leather, Jimena goes the leather. Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> uh, Michael, my... make me a luck check. Roll me d twenty. See what happens. This is why this is why I got mending as one of my cantrips. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the uh, I'm rolling right now. Uh oh, fifteen. You haven't scuffed the leather. Well done. Nice. Oh, okay. My name is Jimena, and yours is... Oh, Lil Rice. They call me Lil Rice. Mr. Rice, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Pleasure's mine. Um, and I'm going to knock on the partition. Comes down. Yep. You're the driver, correct? I am the driver. I is it better if we exchange names or would you prefer to stay out of it? Uh, uh, for now, we'll uh, we'll we'll keep a distance. All the better. And I'll just knock on the partition again. <laughs> <laughs> is there any drinks back there, <laughs> Marlo? Are there any drinks back there? Marlo doesn't like a mess in the car. It's right, no. yeah. He, I mean, Marlo, he was like, "Don't bring any food into the car." No at food all, in so. the car. I'm Mar not supplying the food. Marlo, Marlo uh, doesn't want the obscure to have any reason to add to his debt. And I think at one time there might have been drinks in the car, but somebody spilled. And that added and that dial miles. added two miles. Yeah. Oh dang! Okay. Amazing. Um, but yeah. when you ask I, th I think if you ask Marlo we'll say once we pick up the next person we can stop for beverages if you'd like at the Olive Garden <laughs> oh, oh thanks I get so thirsty they have the you know they have the wonderful like little Italian sodas so oh, I love them Amazing. we'll add that to the agenda Michelle we're, we're going to have a scene at the Olive Garden okay Cool ending scene at the Olive Garden. I love it. It's like, <laughs> it's like the shawarma scene in the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's how this is going to go down. So you get in the car, the uh, doors silently descend, and you head back out the um, to another side of town. It's a little taller. The buildings are a little bit more metal, more chrome, more cement, and waiting. Um, in front of the building where their penthouse is uh, very conveniently located is a, a certain certain cephalid in a very crisp suit. And Squiddy, you see the car pull up. I think uh, Squiddy, any time that Squiddy is introduced... I think he's always talking with someone. I think in this case... Are you talking like, to the doorman? Yeah, it's like the doorman. It's <laughs> okay. like, um, I see the car approaching and I'm like, all right, all right. Well, don't forget, like... Oh, uh, yeah, we'll, no, totally. We'll get lunch next week. Of uh, course, you know, tell yeah. Tell the wife that, you know, give oh. her all my best. Um, oh, oh Gemma hey. loves you. And uh, uh, yeah, if you stop by later on Tuesday, she's got, she's bringing her eggplant palm again. And you know she's always gonna put an extra serving aside for you. You don't yeah, need enough. Then, uh, and then like a little quieter, and he's like, "And that whole business with your cousin, don't worry about it. I've got that taken oh. care of. You're gonna get the friends and family rate too. Uh, you know, oh. just because this is, you know, like, and I'm like, I've, I've got to go. I'm so sorry. I, and I've oh. got um, like, uh, I've I've got my briefcase of holding with me as well. <laughs> uh, so like. I, I'm like saying goodbye to this guy, like, you know, just like opening the door and like getting in. Um, oh, he opens the door for you. You, you do. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, of course. Have a good night. 
you too, you too. Uh, and I get in. I can see uh, Squiddy is not used to being in, having to share a ride <laughs> with, with other people. <laughs> um, so I think he he gets in um, and notices it's a little bit crowded, and he like uh, condenses his body a bit to take up like the smallest amount of space. So as a cephalid, um, he you know. He has the ability to kind of like squish and stretch a little bit. I can squeeze into tight spaces. Uh, and I've actually got, uh, you told us to pick um, some some magic items. So, oh, so yeah. I've got my briefcase of holding, um, but I've also got a, a cloak of many fashions, which in this case is my suit. Um, so the, the cephalid body like can kind of like squish and then the suit is going to like kind of magically, uh, you know, keep its shape with me. So like I like squeeze up in there uh, and I'm just like, you know, maintaining my own personal space, uh, <laughs> this kind of sliver of a man, um, of a squid man, uh, in the backseat of this car. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic description, the sliver of a squid man. <laughs> um, sort of slithers, slides on the perch yourself on the leather seat. This is, you're at home in a vehicle like this. You've taken so many of them. Um, the smell of leather and wood and chrome, um easy enough for you to to relax a little bit in a very familiar atmosphere and as the door closes um marla you check your clock and it's 8 15 it's time to head over to the party and as late. you i'm sorry go ahead marla was never late you're never late one of the many reasons why you're such a good driver um but on the way over um a little not by your prompting at all you haven't touched anything to make this happen the um there's a little table in the center of the uh passenger compartment as i mentioned before it's a little bit more like a conference room on wheels um and a similar and an orb kind of comes up very similar to what we see in like an obscura seance for example but this time um, a smaller one does emerge on your side of the partition as well marlo and this time instead of being used to contact ghosts or the supernatural um an image pops up of a rather familiar face actually to you squiddy um this is declan harlow an old colleague of yours you also used to work the same firm Mm -hmm. um uh, he is a an older human um very hugh bonville looking kind of jowly um just just on just on hello yeah yeah we hear you we oh, hear yeah. you oh oh good oh good i can see you excellent uh very much like a zoom call kind of a situation <laughs> yeah um, you're yeah, muted <laughs> yeah, for a moment turn he's like camera uh, around turn the camera around <laughs> um you know, uh, I, so is this someone having, you know, I've got a history with this person in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, is the, how do they feel about me? Are they, uh, oh, you've worked together. You've had many business lunches okay, over great. like oysters, Rockefeller and very expensive salads. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely like Declan, like, how's it going? Oh, my you boy. Know? Oh, Squiddy. <laughs> oh, it's good to see your face. It's nice to see you've been that, a side uh, how did that Jameson account go? Oh, so well. One. Yeah, no, uh, he uh, they thought I could get him for embezzlement <laughs> against us. <laughs> you know, the firm. You're one of the uh, best. One of the best, Declan. Ah, uh, well, no, you're one of the best. No, you're one of the best. Actually, all right, all joking aside, probably wondering why you're all here in this car or driving it. Ah. <laughs> uh, and he sort of ruffles his papers awkwardly and he says, as you know, uh, we, the five families, don't really come, come together for a lot of dealings. But uh, we've got one particular person in mind who has done quite a bit to anger all five families. Your job tonight is to apprehend them. But first... Let me introduce you to this fellow. And uh, the equivalent of a Zoom screen share happens. <laughs> you see 
The face of a lean, angular, cheekboned looking elf. Um, dark hair on the eyes, dark eyes. Um, he appears with a looking incredibly charismatic. That is a face that you would just entrust to say to, to like look over your children if you could mm -hmm. just incredibly charismatic um hair slicked back into a ponytail wearing a sharp suit um I, I, Squiddy, feel free to roll a history check if you'd like i absolutely will let's see oh i do very poorly okay face looks somewhat familiar but you four. can't place yeah. it I, well, yeah. what happens is I like click open my, you know, briefcase of holding and like reach in Rolodex. and yeah, like I pull out like a, a, the top of like a filing cabinet. Like oh my God, it's a lawyer, Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. And then I open it and I like start like clicking through files and I'm like, hmm, like I know it's in here somewhere, but I, I don't, I'm not able to, to pull up any info. Um, he, uh, you, your filing cabinet descends and you hear the voice of, of Declan Harrow say, Subject, this is Johnny Lowe. He's, uh, rather, he's used to start off with the brokers, but split off on his own and decided to do, uh, I don't know, he went to some of the top schools around here, New Capenna business, uh, the, the, you know, different, different schools that we were, we all, we're all familiar with, aren't we, Squiddy? Um, but, and so we decided that it would be a good idea to approach each of us, each of the families, with an investment prospectus. And we looked at it. We thought it was a great idea. I mean, why not invest Halo and money together to benefit all five families? We know the Caporetti, always looking to build another hot nightclub. Obscura, <laughs> expanding their network. <laughs> Yes, another vampire nightclub. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say another another Olive Garden. <laughs> another Olive another Garden. Olive, the franchise. But bigger. <laughs> the flagship Olive Garden. <laughs> uh, Maestro's always looking to get some conservation money for whatever new things we got from Old Capenna. Um, and the Riveteers construction always costs money. So why not? We invested. They disappeared. With... Mm -hmm. About 15 million credits, gold credits, and some amount of halo. But uh, he, it's been hard to find him. Uh, Declan's face come back, comes back on. We've been trying to hunt him down for six months, but uh, turns out he's got some cousins in Old Capenna who like to hide him. But he's coming back into town tonight. As uh, turns out, you, you've heard of uh, the newfangled music, was it Mercy Maddox? You know, okay, anyone who isn't Squiddy knows who this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you're saying I'm not music. hip with the kids? <laughs> yeah. Mercy Maddox, I love Mercy Maddox. I, I play that while I'm working all the time. Yeah, she's a, yeah, what is she, she, he looks at it like a paper. It was an electronic jazz singer. <laughs> anyway, her new album drops tonight, and we know that they were dating. So we're heading over, we're sending you right now to the after party. Where we've got our good sources say that uh, he's probably going to be in town to celebrate his girlfriend's uh, debut uh, debut album. So uh, Squiddy's going to come in and say, Declan, my, my good friend, I, uh, this job seems like a straightforward one, I must say, but... I gotta say, I'm a little surprised that this guy was able to pull a fast one on all of the families. What about it? What about his business proposal seems so appealing that it got every one of us involved? Um, he says, well, he promised a 300% return on investment. And you had this new fangled mm -hmm. idea of this new, what is it? Uh, it was like a... <sighs> It was like this network of of people. They could come on and they could talk to each other and find each other on this magical network. And then we could like find businesses to advertise on the network to them. And we thought this was a great idea. 
Like it was just so Declan, the slides. I saw the slides. The slides were amazing. I see, I see. Some kind of some kind of interwoven Inter- network. An internet interwoven net. if you say. It's it was amazing. Like you could you could get on there, you could talk to people, you could like order things and then like they would show up like um like two hours later. It was it it could have been something amazing. Um yeah, uh, Squiddy is just like taking notes down and it's like, all right, well uh uh you know, I'm I'm happy to take care of this guy. Gotta say, respect the hustle. Able to pull one over on all the families, it's not an easy thing to do. It's make not sure an easy thing to it's not let's make sure we don't do. underestimate him, everyone. But you need him alive because a contract that he pulled up. He got one of those biovital clauses. You know what I mean, Squiddy? Yeah, Basically, um, you can't break uh, it. I, Squiddy's gonna like, like, look over side eye towards like, uh, um, you know, Maestro's assassin. It was like <laughs> alive, everyone. <laughs> Human, are you disappointed? <laughs> so disappointed. <laughs> that just means there won't be any blood in the back. Again. <laughs> well, let's not let's not jump to conclusions, all right? Alive doesn't mean no blood. Okay, I was worried that <laughs> I, I couldn't, you know, if that's what I'm here for, like that's what I was called to do. It's I'm I'm good at these fish. So uh, I can cover the costs of the cleaning, all right, if it comes to that. I have plastic we can hang up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to like Marlo before he got the plastic, just like casting mending, yeah. <laughs> like mending. each little patch of foot, like each little <laughs> square inch or five inches of blood. Oh, like yeah. Five Another. by five square. <laughs> five by five square. Keep <laughs> moving. <laughs> mending. 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 <laughs> um, that added a few miles as well. So, um, you and so Declan says. Okay, well, uh, you have the assignment. Uh, I'm going to be on site too if you need if you need help. Uh, but it' gonna. All right. Uh, I'll, let's. How do I push the other? Marguerite, how do I push the other button? You push the other button. It's right next to the first button. All right, it's fine. And he pushes a second button. Uh, he pushes something. You hear a click, and then a briefcase rises out, uh, from the table as well. And he says, "If you open that, um, someone someone open it. I'll open it. I can't open it. Okay, great. You open it. <laughs> Have you opened I, it? Yeah. I, 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 can't <laughs> ham, I ham fist open it. Like I've never like it, it's not elegant. You know how like it should just be like two little snaps, like click click. I'm just like I'm almost prying it a little bit. The uh, partition has has come down, and Marlo is just kind of peeking through now. <laughs> Have you parked?" <laughs> Yeah, Marlo has like at this point park is like driving. have you seen it yet? Marlo had like this little projection, but is like now there's something coming out of the table in the back. <laughs> there is over. a rear view mirror, but if you want, yeah. So you pull over to take a look. I don't think Marlo's um, good enough. Yeah, I like to look in the rear view and drive at the same time forward. The uh, Lil Rice opening it like Kratos style, where it's like just put like like <laughs> just uh, like yeah. the your hand in. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the lock <laughs> immediately <laughs> just pops off of this briefcase yeah. and <laughs> just dings against a window and like falls onto a leather seat uh Declan's just like "Ah, okay I guess it's open now all right uh so inside you've got a couple of sleep darts a chloroform bottle and uh there's eight vials of halo these are single Mm -hmm. doses should get you through you can distribute them how you like but uh we think that this should be sufficient given your talents uh, any questions? None. Um, yeah, no, I think that uh, any future questions will be uh, it, for the for our group in terms of figuring out what our approach our approach plan will be. Um, also, in the briefcase are four masks. Fancy um, ones. I think that uh, right, Squiddy's gonna take the the Halo vials and like put it in the pocket of the the suit of any fashion. 
not all eight, just the two. I there's there's four of us, so I I, I take the two, and just kind of assuming that everyone will take two. Um, and I take the mask, and then I think I throw the mask in the briefcase. Um, okay. Squiddy Squiddy's approach to most things is to just go in as himself. <laughs> um, he's got enough of a reputation that he can sort of uh you know get into most places. Um, so maybe that mask will come in handy later, but at least uh his plans tend to not involve having to be disguised. His plans tend to mm-hmm. leverage his uh actual face. Nice. Um, okay. I will, I will get my two vials and put in my front my front um overall jean, my jean my denim overall pocket, uh, yeah. pocket the front one. I, I don't like good luck someone trying to grab Halo from me. Like that's <laughs> good luck. A rhino? <laughs> <laughs> good luck <laughs> just a big right now. um Ooh. and i assume the mask is the only one that makes sense for my face because my face is shaped a certain way where what it's mm-hmm. large look like are, are they like ski masks or are these like Ooh, these are domino like point masks. break and they're like okay domino. no What's no domino no these mask? are a domino like mask, mask is a just an eye mask like uh like robin from batman like oh, a, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Classic but cartoon L- cartoon yeah piece. we're gonna be like that yeah, i like, was like are we, is it gonna be like point break with the ex-presidents or is it gonna be yes right. they're all of lord xander <laughs> 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 I, I like that better <laughs> noted for next time this is a classier yeah this it's a very classy um domino mask it's it's uh made out of a dark velvet material um and then the uh the, and yeah, so you each take however many vials you choose. Who's going to take the uh, the sleep darts and the chloroform? I will take the sleep darts. I think that that's all me. I'll, I'll grab the chloroform. I'll take one yeah. of the sleep darts that you have. Not not. Yeah, you can have, you're yeah. you're all good. Uh, yeah, monk. I could. <laughs> yeah, I, could yeah. I don't got to blow as a I, I'm I'm as you say proficient. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna Amazing. let them handle the the combat stuff. Uh, I I at 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 his age, Squiddy understands his role on the team, and it tends to not involve having to sleep dart or chloroform anyone. Amazing. So, um, you each take your whatever the contents you wish from the uh, briefcase. Declan says, "Well." Um, so some of you will probably want to integrate with the staff. Some of you might want to, I mean, uh, miss, uh, looks at Amena. probably if you want a bodyguard squiddy, that's fine. If not, then it's fine as well. Marlo, I imagine probably know some folks. Well, there is a concierge service and people know things. I mean, I could be, I could be squiddy's bodyguard. Built. I think we're both fit to be bodyguards. That's true. Oh, yeah. All right. If we're going with the story, Sounds good to me. he's himself. Yes. And with that, um, Declan says, All "Right, well, we'll see you there." And uh, good luck. And the uh, both the <laughs> the orbs sink yeah, back into the tables with ease and grace uh due to the damage uh to the briefcase that just sort of like clatters up against the mechanism um <laughs> the top latch like clatters gets the mechanism and it tries to descend and then eventually it just stops because i think yeah i think squiddy <laughs> will grab the briefcase check it to make sure it is not itself uh, a magical briefcase and then put the briefcase inside of my other briefcase. <laughs> okay <laughs> Roll Arcana, or if you have Detect Magic on you, you can do um, that as well. I do have Detect Magic, uh, okay. but I'm a Warlock, so I'd prefer to not. Okay, cool. Uh, Just roll me a quick Arcana Oh, wait, check. no, 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 no. Sorry. I have some ability. Can you do which... it as a ritual? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. I, mm-hmm. I took the ability to take Detect Magic, to be able to cast Detect Magic oh, yeah. whenever. So yeah, nice. I'll Detect Magic on the briefcase. Just to okay. make sure I'm not um, going to create like a portal to <laughs> hell or whatever. Game over. And the game is done shifting. because the everybody has <laughs> just turned into a different dimension. I mean, it could just be it, it could be a briefcase of holding, but maybe it's also a mimic, and therefore it has to, you know, maybe it's a sleeping <laughs> mimic brief, briefcase of ho- holding. That um, I don't know. Ooh. So the um, so you take you detect magic on it on the way over. 
each one of you, you take your time, like making sure that you are prepped, that you look good, that you've got your weapons ready. Meanwhile, Squiddy is all about this briefcase, which is actually completely mundane and is right. also broken. So you can I, 100% I, just take so it. So I, fa- I found it. The thing that, so the ability that gives this to me is called Eldritch Sight. So I think what it is, is that um, Squiddy takes out like a little tiny pair of glasses and like puts them on. And like the glasses, like let me like see magic, and so like I can detect, I can cast detect magic at will without spending a spell slot or anything. So I take out my little glasses, check it to make sure it's not going to cause any problems, and then I stow that inside of my other briefcase. Right. Where they live. <laughs> How many briefcases are in your briefcase? <laughs> um, like I, I like open it up, and I'm like, well, like, what kind do you want? Uh, and. and <laughs> Like, I think that it it has a very definite, uh, like, Mary Poppins vibe to it, where it's like, um, yeah, I, I will take all of my lawyering stuff is inside of that briefcase, including multiple other briefcases and, like, giant stacks of paperwork and stuff. That's... Pull out a absolutely. little martini glass. <laughs> That's so great. All right. And as the car pulls up... um at the front so the car pulls up first at the back of this mansion um squiddy you know who this place belongs to um it is a a really opulent uh mansion belongs to um a friend of uh not so much a friend as is someone you've seen at a lot of different fancy occasions like when you make lunch reservations this person's probably at a nearby table um the trevons harding trevon um another person who is unaffiliated with the families but has nevertheless made quite a bit of money um sorry yeah Um, go ahead did you pre you have that name was pre-planned Yes. Like on your list. Okay. Cause I coincidentally, that was also the last Squiddy's last name. Oh no, sorry. I looked at the wrong name. I'm sorry. <laughs> wrong name. I have okay. like so many names. I'm, I Long apologize. Lost brother. I was so, like, yeah. whoa. It's your Suddenly twin. Appears. Stab. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's totally fine. It Not works no matter what. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't like accidentally line up on that. Cause that could. No, no, no. I wrote it down next. I wrote it down right next to the name okay. of the person who <laughs> this mansion belongs to. My apologies. Uh, the name of this uh, person's actually. <laughs> um. Uh, Patricia um, D- Delavine. Okay. And uh, she is a lady who lunches. And so you would often see her uh, with her little coterie of people. Is, often she, at the uh, is she associated with the sort of, you know, criminal world? Or is she more Not, of a civilian? Um, I mean, her husband was. Okay. And then he died, and now she has all this money. Yeah, and then she decided, okay, so yeah. Money. So much Great. money now. Did I know oh, her husband? My husband. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you did know her that's husband. That's right. Wait, wait, that's a great <laughs> question. Was that, was, did the husband die or die, die. Under, yeah. uh, under mysterious circumstances? Whoever is interested in knowing the fate of this NPC's husband, please roll me a history check. You know oh, I'm all yes, in this. Absolutely. this who wants to get the hot like goss about. on this widow? Yes. What Little is this again? Like, a history gonna... check? History right, check. Yeah. I got an 18. Got a nine. Mm-hmm. Little Rice is going to be like, how tragic. That's so that's I don't so ask scary. questions if there are <laughs> bodies in the trunk. Are we rolling uh, on d- uh, d- Roll d- however or... you like. Cool, I'm going to roll some dice. I'm also taking my 18. Um, so, Jimena and Squiddy, you, you know that um, Mr. Delavine was found in his hot tub um on top of their penthouse suite um a few years back and he was old you know patricia was young it is entirely you like he had always had to take a lot of meds for his heart condition so when you have heart palpitations and you're in a hot tub it's not necessarily the best combination but that being said he was a pretty spry Mm. older dude so it's a little it's a little convenient. There's definitely, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have context for this. I just know that at some point, Squiddy definitely said, "Like, talk about being in hot water with the wife." Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> um, too soon. 
and he had a you, you recognize yeah, this i guess <laughs> this was about like five years ago so okay, okay. It, it made it made like the the tabloids and the rags but okay. like mm. ooh, like tight like what was it a oh, wine magnet de Levine dies mm -hmm. in tragic hot tub accident extra extra read all about it yeah, yeah. and he meant a you you know that this was totally a murder yeah you totally know this was a 100 percent. i still say uh i still say too soon <laughs> i, I, I <laughs> will soon. go with the alibi <laughs> so tragic yeah so tragic i think um not not in i'm not sure if you've got like a lot of backstory planned for this person but i definitely could see like this is a situation in which like squiddy sort of being like the criminal lawyer worked with the husband for a long time to get him out of stuff you know yada 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 and then when the white, you know, when this incident happened, Squiddy, being the family lawyer, just helped to make sure that all the assets got properly transferred over to the wife. And so, as a result, is in good standings with the wife. Like, Squiddy, he's not, like, a turncoat, but he's 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 willing to work for anyone who's paying, you know? Patricia has sent over many bottles of champagne to your table when you're in the same place lunching wonderful, together. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we pull so, up and it's like, oh, I I know this place. We're going to be yeah. fine. Just just This is actually that's how they make their and we'll yeah. get inside, yeah. So this that's actually how they make their money. They're all about like sparkling mm -hmm. um sparkling wine. Um, you know, they can't call it champagne because it's not that's not how it is in New Capetta. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. There are rules. There are rules and I will respect them. Sorry, friends. Um no, but... there's a champagne region in, of New Capenna. Oh, there's a champagne region of New Capenna? It. No. Hey. <laughs> it's, 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 okay. it's a new land. It's a new land. Yeah, <laughs> they, they managed to reclaim some old Capenna vines, and they're, 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 they're thriving up here. Oh, yeah, kind of great. into this. Kind of into this. <laughs> um, so, you, um, uh, so, with a sense of relief, uh, both uh, Squiddy, you see that you're driving, like, pulling up to the Delavine, uh, man the mansion, and uh, Jimena, you know of this person. You don't run into the same circles, but you know of this person. So this mm -hmm. is totally familiar to you. Um, you pull up to the back, um, just to sort of scope out. You see people, it's still about like 15 to 20 minutes before the party starts at nine o'clock. So you see event staff coming in and out. You immediately see a cabaret affiliated catering spot. Mm -hmm. um, truck and just people setting making sure the tents are set up making sure that the uh the poker tables and roulette wheels are going um and that there's a little bit of a stage area outside as well um and yeah little rise you do see like some rocks and and other like bigger stronger folks like uh -huh. carrying in tables and whatnot so if you wanted to go and infiltrate like you 100 percent could and yeah. they're they're dressed very similarly to you as well. All right. Uh, I mean, I also got my mall out of the the uh, the the trunk of the car, and when I did grab the mall out of the trunk of the car, the car did lift back Suspension. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I'll... and you know, we don't really disarm in New Capenna, so <laughs> no. Well, yeah, I'll I'll let you know, Lil Rice know in terms of you know, if you want to go, sort of through the back as like one of the staff members you could throw your mall into my briefcase i i could just get it in for you and then hand it over to you whenever oh, sure. you need to do it oh you mean it works just like that that's that's so convenient that's oh, oh. i i get that back though right that's of course of course don't worry about it it'll be safe in here trust me i i've got tons of weapons in here. and like i open up and you see like all sorts of like <laughs> Yeah, little like, like knives sword. and stuff yeah <laughs> go inside I, I the briefcase and it's like in the matrix when all the shelves go through it <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it's like this, like, like there's, yeah, there's like a great, like a, a claymore from old Capenna just happening nice. just, yeah, just like in there. for me, like I'm not a, as much of a fighter, so all the weapons in there are like antiques, you know, they're just like there for mm -hmm. show and stuff, but I'm like D don't worry about it, like, you know I'll, I'll get it back to you. I don't know why but I trust you, I Something about you. I, I don't, okay. A lot of people say that. <laughs> I understand just, now. <laughs> Squiddy, you just have that kind of face and just like morphs a little bit to look even more appealing. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, um, I can change, like, as we step out, I sort of like scope out, like, what the kind of like crowd, like, what's the Oh, this vibe is the of back. The if you want to go to, uh, 
people okay, like okay. you. Okay, okay, we'll go to the front later. So the front. But like, right I, mm-hmm. I, I, like as a cephalid, I can like change my like skin color, and I have like a magic suit that changes color as well. So I always sort of show up like you know matching the decor. Like you know, I'm always like dressed perfectly for whatever the event is. Uh, I will, I will go to the back where all the rokes and probably some riveteer folks are. Yeah, it's a combo. Like, rivet- there's some labor from the riveteers. Uh, there is, uh, it's a kind of riveteer, cabaretty affiliated operation that's yeah. catering this sp- this event. Um, so you you head out and you slip in, um, start you just pick up a table, mm-hmm. um, you, know, you carry it over. There's also like some very meticulously manicured shrubbery you're able to to grab as well. And uh, another rocks looks at you and say, "Hey, new guy of the job. Who's this?" Oh, my name's Little Rocks, brother. How how you doing? Rocks. Hey, hey, how's it going? And he he clasps your hand and goes in for uh, like one of those back hugs, mm-hmm. and he says, "Hey, yeah, it's uh, my name's Tony, and this is uh, I'm working uh, with this particular thing for tonight. You know, uh, just getting hired for the evening. Money's money, you know." Oh yeah, have you uh, have you seen any uh, some nice little spots in here? Any 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 um place for that i don't know having a little something or uh you know uh you know have a little, little, little money or halo on the side oh i like the way you think well we just got here but i'll tell you what if i see something i know i'm gonna definitely cl- get you in on that for sure oh, well, yeah. i appreciate, I appreciate yeah. that my brother I, pre- Absolutely. I, appreciate that. I mean hey big hedges can uh, hide us huh oh yeah we need to get anywhere absolutely um so you um you integrate yourself very quickly with the with the group they're all like salt of the earth very like just here for a gig here for a good time on the gig kind of a situation um marlo luis pulls up to the front um just as the uh you, you wait for a couple of minutes because you want to be right on time of course and Eventually, you pull up to the front. The doors open, and um, you, know, you depart the car first as bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and then you hold out your hand and escort Squiddy, not wearing a mask, um, <laughs> up to the marble driveway, uh, up onto the steps where you um, join the queue of people who are waiting to enter. Oh, we're not party. waiting in the queue. Squ- I don't think Squiddy waits. Yeah. Oh. You see, okay, well, you see a queue. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, no, we definitely walked straight past the queue. Okay, go ahead and roll me some charisma. Yeah, performance has a literal spear that she's using to, like, almost as, like, she is stabbing it in front of herself and then walking up to meet it. So she's, like, clearing the way in front of people. Roll me intimidation. Yeah. And uh Squiddy roll me performance. Can I help Shit, with the intimidation? Go. You can help with the yeah, intimidation. Yeah, proficient. Instead. So, let's do it. All right. Yeah. Okay, I got a 7. Ooh, that's a dirty 20. Nice. Oh. <gasps> it Squiddy, it doesn't even matter that you're here. <laughs> the event <laughs> turns on a flip. Uh something flips inside yeah. this this Tabaxi's character and personality and the rather quiet reticent mild-mannered person intense but a mild-mannered person you see in the car just something it's almost as it's like when you see uh one of those cool cocktails freeze over at one of those high-end bars you kind of go to sometimes that's what happens nothing but ice and ice that'll definitely freeze you to death if you get in its way (laughs) that Mm -hmm. is the um aura himena gives off as she effortlessly clears you uh, clears the path and clears uh, 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 clears you through this little crowd as you head up to the uh, master of ceremonies in the front, who is a, a rather harassed uh, young-looking elf who looks at you and says, "Oh, oh, Squiddy, oh, you think? Oh, I don't think you have it on the list, but uh, yeah, get in. Go ahead and come in. Patricia would love to see you. Oh, um, wonderful, beautiful. Yeah, I please, not our, even a role necessary. Guys. I'm I like." Um, thank you, my good man. I reach out my hand and shake his oh, hand. Of course, of course. Um, the uh, I think that I am going to. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of his time, and I don't want to like push our luck here at all. But I do. I want. It's like by any chance, do you know where the hostess is? You know, I, I want to go pay my respects. 
Oh, of course. Um, she's over in the um, gosh, she's. I think she might be trying her hand at the uh, spin the bottle room. <laughs> you know how she is. She's a uh, yeah. Patricia. Patricia's a lot of fun. Um, but I think she's gonna be uh, trying to get people to join her and spin the bottle up in the back parlor. Uh, back. Uh, you know, just a little further down. You know your way around. Yeah, um, I'm like, you thank you, my around. good man. Have a great night. And you know, I, I oh, don't like, forget your gift bag. I tip him a little bit, you know, like oh, I'll take I'm the gift bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. both get a gift yeah. bag. Yeah. Nice. Oh, okay, great. Cool. Yeah. What is what's in the gift bag? Uh, you look in and you see um, a small crystal vial of Halo and a nice. a copy of Mercy Maddox's new record. Oh, all right. Yeah. Music. The, okay. Do. Do we know why um, this sort of like release party is happening at uh, Miss Delevingne's place? Uh, like, do we um, know th what the connection is there? The connection, yeah. Um, so go ahead and roll me a history check again. All right. Both of us, or whoever cares to know. Yeah. All right, I got a fifteen. Mm. Okay, I think I only got an eight. All right, fifteen clears it. Ten, um, actually, but still. So uh, per Patricia is a socialite. And um, so as someone with money, someone who's still young and someone who is attractive, uh, tend to like to hang out with other young, influential and attractive people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Mercy is one of those people. So um, it would make complete sense that she might have figured out a way to um, befriend someone in the showbiz, as it were. So as you make your way into uh, this sparkling mansion filled with flowers and just um, intricately, clearly like very well done, but also hastily done portraits of Mercy Maddox and her like new album cover, um, Marlo, you um, drive your Louise to the appointed parking area with the concierge is and you sorry wait yeah, real quick ahead, before before, before okay. at the end of this scene i just want to turn to Jimena and be like you case the place i'm gonna go schmooze and try to figure out you know where everyone is at trust me i'm already on it and yeah. she's i feel like they do the thing where they part ways yeah um yeah. but yeah Jimena's Jimena's gonna start uh doing what she does best fantastic on the prowl Love it. Oh, I know. Sheesh. And then uh, Marlo, uh, returning to you, um, mm -hmm. you pull up effortlessly to the designated parking area where um, you're not going to, because you're a private driver, um, you're not going to hand this baby over to a concierge service. You're going to park this yourself. So you um, make your way over to uh, basically a very large, well manicured um, lawn. It has been set aside for this expensive grass, but who cares? You can always buy more. And uh, as you get out, um, you see other cars starting to park here and there. And there's one car in particular that catches your eye. Um, hmm. What would you like to roll in order to identify this car? And I would like you to add your proficiency. Okay. Because you know cars. I know things. How about investigation? Go ahead and roll me investigation. Okay. Uh, I got a 26. You, in the moonlight, you can still see the old Capenna detailing on this car. Old Capenna detailing? Look at those. Yeah. There's, there, are, there are some old decorative motifs on this car. And you... You see that in some ways it's almost like a retrofit uh, of certain things. And you know with some certainty this is this is the car of someone who really likes old Capenna and you know of someone who recently may have come from there. Oh, oh. I think while this is happening is I think with that high roll I'll see a lot of details. Mm -hmm. I want it to be so that Marlo is actually setting up the plastic in the in the, <laughs> in the, in the back. <laughs> like, it just like, rolls up. Down. It just right, rolls everything's up. Everything's rolling up. It's just like, yeah. it's like, like these hatches, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, 
Okay. Just <laughs> <getting it. laughs> Not the first rodeo. And while this happens, just like, it's like our eyes kind of like. We, we meet each other our gazes meet except it's a car y your car yes the car's <laughs> headlights and your yeah, eyes yeah. There's, a, there's like a my eyes kind of because they're feline maybe the headlights are on and my they like contract like a cat's mm -hmm. and who is this person oh this car oh the car is empty look there's at the no owner the you car. said the uh there's somebody that i know Oh, uh, well, you just did get information from oh, that um, person. Okay. That yeah, the target, Johnny the Will. mark. The target. Mm. So you know the See. mark is probably here. Does this this car have that, that halo pinstriping? Just super, <laughs> super over the top. <laughs> it is kind of gaudy. So it does it has paint that invokes halo. But is mm. is probably not Halo. Like oh, you can just lick the car yeah. and you're like, oh, got, hit. Well, it's got like it probably has like wood paneling and stuff, right? Because it, it's going for that like retro old school mm -hmm. look. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you see on the um, instead of the for the hood ornament, um, what looks like um, an old angel, like an old old Ooh. Capenna angel. And on that note, I think that this is a great time for us to take a quick break before we start scouting. Ooh, All right. Nice. So we'll see you here in 10 minutes. Go stretch. <laughs>